So good afternoon and welcome to our Vondi live here uh, live in Les Sables de Lone. It's uh, 12.30 UTC, 13.30 here on the west coast of France. And the news last night, well, it was all about the incredible story that was a rescue of uh, Kevin Escoffier by Jean Le Cam. And that rescue occurred at 1.18 UTC this morning. Uh, Escoffier did have to abandon his boat uh, in a big hurry yesterday afternoon. It was at 13.46 UTC. He had to grab only his survival suit and his boat had literally broken in two. He spent 11 and a half hours in the, in the uh, life raft before he was rescued uh, by Jean Le Cam early this morning. My guests uh, today are uh, Jean, uh, uh, sorry, Jacques Carris, the race director, a little bit of a busy night for uh, Jacques. Uh, and also I think we have live from uh, Yes We Cam, uh, none other than Kevin Escoffier. Kevin, how are you? Um, pretty well, pretty well. Uh, much better than uh, the previous night I, I spent in, uh, in a very bad uh, break and break, break, bed and breakfast. <laughs> Tell us then, uh, Kevin, what, what, what happened? Well, it's, I, I, I'm, 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 it's still hard for me to, to believe it. Still hard for me to believe uh, that uh, I, I broke a boat inside a wave. I brought a, a boat at 90 degrees uh, in, in, inside the wave. I should have, I should have taken a picture uh, for people to believe me that uh, just after the wave, the bow was pointing, uh, was pointing uh, uh, 90 degrees of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the stern of the, of the boat. And uh, all water was coming uh, from, uh, from forward, obviously. And uh, the, the, the water level inside uh, grew up very fast, and I had a very, very short time uh, to be able to decide what, uh, what, uh, what I have to do. After, again, uh, I've been thinking to that in, uh, in, the, in the life raft. I've been thinking to that uh, a bit now, but it's down, it's down. Uh, should I sh sh should have been trying to stay a bit longer on the boat? Maybe it would have been better for me, for people to, to find me. But uh, what I'm pretty sure that I would have been able to stay the night uh, on the boat uh, because the water that was already going above the deck, it was too dangerous and I was better in the life raft. So you, you had your, uh, your personal um, locator beacon with you? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I've got this, uh, this routine from, uh, uh, this routine from, uh, from uh, crew, uh, uh, crew racing when I always have a, a personal, uh, personal, personal one in the pocket of my, uh, um, f of, of my uh, wet weather gear trouser. Uh, and um, since I had very few time, I put the, um, the, the TPS, <laughs> the, the, the sur survival suit in English, I put the survival suit above uh, my um, my wet weather gear trouser, so I, I I found it back inside the um, the life raft, and I had also uh, the hyperb that I wanted to take with me and to put on the stanchion of the back of the boat, and it's that is at this moment that I've been uh, uh, I've been washed off by a wave, uh, trying to to put everything on on the deck on the boat instead of being inside the water uh, in the water inside. So you got into the life raft. Yes, because uh, in, um, we had that on Banque Populaire. If you if you if you keep a uh, nipper inside, sometimes with the carbon around, it's not uh, working. We had this this issue uh, with Banque Populaire on the last route du Rhum. So I wanted to put the nipper outside of the boat for it to be able to work well. And I took as well the the life draft that was un under the water because the, the water was above. Uh, the, the, the cockpit floor uh, level and it was going uh, up and up and uh, I wanted to, to put to be able to, to use it uh, quickly if, uh, if necessary I wanted to put it to, to be able to have the life raft and the hyperb outside and at this moment I've been washed off and, uh, and so the DC, I hadn't the decision uh, anymore so it was inside the life raft and what happened after that then you, you had to just wait for uh, Jean Le Cam to arrive Yes, exactly. I was looking outside very, very often uh, through uh, there is a zip in uh, the I I I was looking very often outside, and I was very happy to see uh, to see Jean. And uh, after that, when Jean uh, turned around me, we've seen that it was impossible to uh, to go from uh, from the life raft to the boat at this moment because uh, uh, weather conditions were too bad. Uh, the sea state was pretty bad with something like 5, 5.5 meters, but a very, uh, uh, a lot of uh, hunger on, on the waves and uh, 30, 32 knots of wind. 
Um, so we, 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 we are, I don't know, we, I don't know if we decided that because we have, we have been able only to, to say uh, two or three words, but for me in my head, uh, the idea was to, to stay in the life trust, uh, uh, for the weather to, um, to be, um, to be better for the waves to be smaller and the wind to decrease and to do the, um, uh, to do the move uh, between life trust and boats the, the day after. So for me in my head, I was going to spend all the night in the life trust and it, it was okay for me. For me, it was safer to spend the night in the life raft and to switch from one book to the other uh, with less wind and less uh, waves. So for the night, I spent the, the night quite, I, I, quite well. I, I say it was not comfortable at all, huh? but in the head, in the head, I was not uh, going to, for, for me, it was sure that the, the day after, I, I, I'll, I will have someone uh, coming with less wind and less waves and to, to be able to, to get from uh, with the life raft to other boats. So just describe the, uh, the moments when uh, Jean came and uh, picked you up then. Uh, I was, so I, I had a bit of trouble to, to sleep uh, for the night. Uh, so I've been uh, eating, eating a bit and, uh, the, 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 uh, and, and, and drinking uh, the, the water we've got in there. And um, in, um, close to the morning, I heard a sail. Uh, at the beginning, I thought I thought it was uh, still uh, waves um, just uh, coming on the life draft, and it, I heard a, a sail uh, flapping. So I, 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 I get out. I, uh, I, 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 I had my head out of the life draft, and I've seen. Uh, uh, and it was it, it was it was not dark anymore due to the moon. Even if the sun was not there, uh, it was we were able to see very well. And I've seen Jean just above me at. I don't know, but 100 meters, 200 meters. And I asked him, uh, now, we do it now? And he said, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and he told me that I will come uh, against you. And he wanted to, he wanted to have um, my life right. He wanted to have his boat coming like that, you know, drafting on the, on the, on the life raft. But uh, he, he just, he was a bit too fast. And it was five meters. I don't know exactly. It's always hard to say in meters, but he threw me. He threw me a line, a line with a, with a, with a boy at the extremity. I catched it, and then we pull both of us pull on each side to be able to get the life raft as close as possible to the stern of 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 Jean Le Cam Imoca. And as soon as I was close enough, I jumped and catch and catch the the, the back of the boat. And what was the first thing Jean said to you? Oh, you're on board, you're on board. He was very happy. Oh, you're on board, Kevin. I told him, oh, yes, I'm on. I'm sorry to disturb your race, Jean. But and, and, and we, and we, we, had a big, uh, we had a big hug together. And he told me, no, 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 it's not a big deal, Kevin. I mean, uh, last, time, last time it was me disturbing the race of Pierre B. Exactly, exactly. It's an incredible story, and it's so good to see you safe. There are so many people around the world that have been concerned about you through the night. It's not just a French race. You have so many friends around the world, Kevin, that everybody is so happy to see you. And how, how do you feel now then? It was a tough night, uh, obviously. Uh, but I, I've been quite impressed of uh, how stable a life draft is because the sea state and, and was very bad. But I, I, still, I, still, I still have uh, in my head uh, the... Um, the, the picture of my boat uh, with with the nose pointing uh, pointing uh, pointing up. Uh, it's just like you know, it's just like it's a bad dream to get out of a wave with your boat broken in two and all the water getting all your stuff everywhere. Uh, it's still hard for me to believe it. It is indeed, Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us at this uh, difficult time. I give our uh, regards to Jean Lecam. We know that uh, he's an incredible seaman. But we also know that he's got some good red wine on board. Alors, uh, I have to check for that because it, 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 did, not, uh, it did not uh, uh, give me anything. And I think he wants to, 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 uh, to save that for, uh, for, the, for the end of uh, his trip. So I, I think I will take a sponge to bail, uh, to bail a bit everywhere uh, <laughs> as an excuse to, uh, to look where, where he's uh, hiding uh, his stuff. Cool. Thank you so much, Kevin. So uh, Jacques Carey, I mean, you. amazing and, to uh, see. And still, and still, I want to, I want to, to thank uh, Jacques again. I, I, I've seen, I've seen you this morning, and I was a bit tired. But thanks again for the great, uh, uh, great work you've done. 
and thanks again also to my sponsor because uh, I've seen the the smile of Jean-Jacques Laurent. Huh? He has the pointy reason not to be happy. He, he lost a boat. Uh, we, we, are, we are done the, with the race, but uh, I'm very happy to to have this kind of partner and to be to be racing with them and very happy to race with uh, people uh, as good as Jean Le Cam or as good as uh, Jacques Caresse that have been a great seller as well. And I know it's I, I think it's very important to have people at this uh, at this place uh, that have been great seller and uh, had this kind of uh, of issue and trouble uh, on sea to be able to understand us and how it works. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> so, Jack, uh, I mean, incredible night, but a, a great element of teamwork that really pulled the whole thing together. Yes, it's uh, really a teamwork. Of course, we have uh, all together in the office of race management with uh, contact with uh, MRCC, Cape Town, MRCC French, MRCC uh, Cross Grenet too. And with the help of uh, Christian Dumas and, and Seb Joss to, to make the um, triangle for rescue, to, to know exactly what to do with uh, four boats coming on the uh, area. It's really, really important to give the maximum good information to be, to be on the right uh, way to, to, rescue, uh, to rescue Kevin. And you had this, uh, this program from Meteo France, this drift program, which I think they use for oil spillages, or it's just to to work out how uh, elements will drift. Exactly, it's a good program with Meteo France that uh, I asked to cross, uh, cross, cross uh, Grenet, and they say, okay, we do, uh, we do this uh, demand. And they uh, reply to us quickly, and uh, with the condition, with the wind condition, with the streaming condition, and they give us a really good um, information and opportunity to, to go on the right side of the triangle. That was important for us. And when we got a new position of the Hippard, that was not sure the Hippard was in the life raft, but we, we asked Jean to, to go there anyway. It was downwind. He go, he, he saw nothing, and he takes just uh, away um, southeast, uh, like his first point, and after a few minutes, we just was with Jean by Skype, nobody at the navigation table, but he was walking outside and it was a long, long hour. Well, at this point, you didn't know that he had got to... Uh, no, 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 no. You never knew that? No, because Jean was on the deck. It was a really long time. He never come back to us to say what's happened. And at one moment, I saw... Uh, I, I just heard a discussion. I saw the, the light, the flashlight. And I saw Jean coming back to the cockpit with a large, uh, large smile. And it was a magnific moment. And just Kevin behind him with his survival uh, suit. So the, the EPIRB signals you had were what? You had? The first signal we got, it was uh, EPIRB IES signal. So it's a very close area. So Jean has his first signal. But after that, when Jean saw for, before the dark, uh, dark night, he saw one time uh, the Kevin, but he, he could not take it in board he, because he need to take a reef to come back to put uh, propeller, pro, propeller propulsion on. It was complicated for him. The weather was very rough. And so he came five times on this same, same point, but never saw anything. And the, the night was, was there now. And so it's why we asked the other boats, three other boats to come in this area to organize the uh, possibility of a rescue. So in fact, uh, Jean went down, down back to the rescue area or back into this zone and he decided that because it was dark, there was more chance of seeing the light. Yes, and Jean, Jean was uh, tired too because he did a big job uh, during the day. So we say Jean a little bit in standby for a few, a few moments. And when I saw he, he come back uh, with speed, we do uh, another Skype with him. And to say, Jean, we have a new position. We don't know exactly if it could be the life rift or not, but I think it's good to go on this one. He said, okay, I go. And that was uh, the good way because we, we found uh, quickly after this position, uh, the life rift uh, with Kevin in good shape. Good. Now, listen, we, we had um, Boris Herman was part of this uh, operation. He was on the zone and we, uh, we spoke with Boris and he recounted his role in the incident last night. So, Boris, can you just um, recount what what your role was yesterday evening and uh, and what happened? I got asked by the race direction to 
a third uh, specific sector, um, we got um, by email a zone that I could overlay on my chart so that I knew exactly where they wanted me to search with a 0 0.3 miles distance between my path one way and, and coming back the other way. So I, I started to, to go with the wind from the side um, in my sector from one end to the other. One pass at, at the conditions and the speed was an hour. Um, so to have to, 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 to do my whole sector would have taken very, very long. But after one and a half or two hours, I, um, I saw the message that he, that Kevin has been found. And, uh, and that was, of course, um, the best moment uh, ever. <laughs> and I'm so happy that he got found. It's incredible. And what was going through your head when you were searching? What was your emotions? I was um, relatively um, composed and quiet, uh, focused, very focused. Um, really, my eyes were searching the sea um, in the radius around the boat. Um, but, of course, kind of a cinema goes through your head, like, what is he doing at the moment? Where is he? Uh, is he coping? Uh, is he still awake? Can he hear me if I call the v VHF? Um, uh, things like that. And uh, and knowing, realizing that it's uh, we need so much luck tonight, I was praying a little bit while I was looking over the sea. There was a strong moon uh, lightening up the sea, so um, there was a certain chance to spot something, but between these big waves to spot a small life raft uh, is, is pure luck, and uh, luckily uh, then uh, his beacon in his pocket, I think, helped, and also the little light that John LeCam could spot on top of the life raft. Indeed. And what, what did it feel like afterwards? Did you take some time to recover and sleep, or what, what was your reaction afterwards? Yes, overnight I was lucky that the wind stretched for a safe, easy constellation where the boat also was at a decent speed and not slamming. Uh, that gave me the chance to sleep uh, since the incident till the morning quite a bit. And uh, only now, sitting here in the morning and speaking to people, I realize what happens, and um, and and I feel quite emotional about it. I see, but at the same time, you have a certain solidarity, looking after each other and knowing that other sailors are close. Yes, of course. There's not a second hesitation. The um, the safety of of another sailor is much more important than the race. Um, we, I think, all of us are happy, and I was. Absolutely um, happy to abandon the race to to focus on uh, on finding Kevin, and uh, that was the absolute priority. I I, I cannot imagine what yeah, I don't want to think about what could have happened, and uh, and that has made um, the race kind of. So now you're just going to take a little bit of time and get back into it slowly. Yes, uh, then this morning I pulled out my dip top and um, trimmed the sails differently, and uh, the wind also changed. And I'm I'm quite uh, going now the normal sail configuration and normal speed, but um, uh, I I don't feel uh, <laughs> completely ready yet to to leave this behind. Um, it 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 was a shock for me. I mean, a, yeah, a big a big fear. And um, yeah, it, it, it just uh, I just realized it this morning, really. And uh, so the boat the boat is going at normal race speed, but um, <laughs> I still need a bit of time to to get back to to the race in my head. So indeed, Boris saying that uh, the boat is back to race speed, but he's taking some time to get back into the uh, race mode in his head. Meantime, uh, let's look at the uh, standings uh, at midday today. Obviously, Charlie Dallin crossed the uh, longitude of uh, Cape of Good Hope yesterday evening, uh, around about or just 11, 11, I think it was, uh, just before midnight UTC. He leads the race by 219.4 miles uh, this, uh, this afternoon, ahead of Thomas Rion, Louis Burton moves up to third. He's 262 miles behind the leader and uh, closed a little bit uh, on Thomas Rion with that uh, nice routing in the south. Uh, Damien Sagan up to uh, fourth 
uh, for the meantime. Sebastian Simon going very well just now, 19.9 knots on the 30 minute uh, speed gun up to midday. Boris Herman, who we just spoke to, is in sixth. John Lecam in seventh. Uh, Yannick Bestav in eighth. Giancarlo Padotti in ninth. And uh, Benjamin Dutra tenth. Sam Davis in eleventh. Looking down for internationals, well, Alex Thompson still ranked 14th. Uh, Alan Rura 17th. Uh, and then uh, onto the second page, we see Didak Costa and Pip here still uh, having a good little race together. We see that Kojiro Shiraishi is uh, past uh, Ari Husela now, Japanese uh, skipper who's uh, had his problems earlier on racing under one reef. He is uh, past um, Ari and uh, catching up with Miranda Merrin. So that's the rankings uh, just now. I think we have uh, Mike Golding with us. Hopefully, give us a little bit of a reaction, Mike, um, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. I mean, well, you could hear it all in Boris's voice. Uh, it's been a very tough night. And even for those of us at home following, um, it brings back uh, memories for me and, and certainly my family. And we were all transfixed by the story once we, once we heard it. Um, of course, uh, you know, it was it's shocking to hear what happened uh, to PRB and how quickly the situation developed on board. Uh, but, you know, the boats have got a lot faster and there's an awful lot of boat beyond the mast bulkhead, which uh, I think has caused problems before, but uh, you don't expect to see your boat bent in half. But in essence, Mike, we're, we're quite fortunate in that we have such a big fleet and they're all coming into the south. There's a certain uh, safety in numbers. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, I, I think from the time of the first alert to the time of Jean being on scene uh, was something like two hours. So um, that's obviously a, a, a real benefit if the fleet is compressed like this and more difficult when the fleet is stretched out, as it often is. So um, I, I think the reality is, is that perhaps in this instance, we were, uh, uh, PRB was pretty lucky that the fleet was so compressed and couldn't have anyone better than Jean Le Cam uh, on, the, on the case to look for you. I can imagine that scenario for Jean um, in the middle of the night, choosing to, uh, to make that decision to get, to get uh, get him off, off PRV as quickly as possible because I think once you've uh, found someone and lost them again and then found them again, you want to get them on board as quickly as you can. And what about the, the mindsets of the racers now? I mean, obviously, we, we saw Boris, we spoke with um, Yannick Bestaven as well, a little bit shell-shocked, but there's a long way to go. What's the, how do they, their mindsets evolve back into race mode or do they maintain a kind of prudent approach for a while well i mean you could tell from boris he sounds tired i mean you know they, they'll have had adrenaline flowing through more adrenaline than the race normally provides rushing through their systems overnight every single one of them will have wanted to find kevin and um you know this whole episode has has uh made people heighten people's awareness of uh, the dangers of being in the south of sailing these very high speed boats uh, on your own in the southern ocean and i think not just the people involved in the rescue but everyone around the fleet will be taking a breath this morning having an extra look around their boat uh, and just trying to get their heads back into the racing Indeed, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hopefully you'll continue to join us uh, with your uh, excellent uh, insight into the race from your, uh, your four Vendée Globes. So, Mike Golding... Uh, Great to see Kevin. Indeed. Uh, and we had uh, Alexia Barry uh, on, uh, on the uh, audio this morning, and she was similarly expressing the, her um, appreciation that uh, Kevin was rescued, and, and also her, uh, she was visibly shaken. I'm very good, thank you. I uh, had a, quite a weird night, uh, stressful uh, night, and I was, was really concerned by Kevin's situation. Um, I knew that uh, from where I am, I cannot do anything for him, except uh, trying to give him all my thoughts, all my energy, my really good style. And uh, so I was talking to him, uh, last night, telling him, uh, come on, Kevin, you will be fine, Jean is coming, so 
I was not here to help him, but uh, I did my best from where I am, and I'm really glad that the story has a good end. And a few words about the seamanship of uh, Jean Lacam. Yeah, Jean is amazing. Uh, you know, he knows uh, the story about rescue. Uh, he was rescued by uh, Vincent two years ago, and he's a really good sailor. I think it was a kind of luck for Kevin to have Jean behind him, and, uh, close by him. And, um, you know, these guys are really tough. They are really good sailors. I cannot imagine jumping out of my boat and the rescue boat is not uh, ready yet. And uh, Kevin is amazing and Jean, uh, Jean also. And I think also uh, about Boris, Yannick and Seb, they came as soon as they can. And that's the story of the Vendée Club. You know, we are racing, but first of all, we are taking care of each concurrent each skipper and when we are arriving in the big south it's no more about uh, being the first it's about being safe i think uh, it's nice to win huh? but uh, it's nicer to finish in one piece and uh, that all the fleet i hope that are here now will finish uh, in good health so we are now doing the Vendée Club. It's a big challenge, and uh, we know that this kind of thing can happen. Indeed. So I'd imagine, in some respects, you feel a little more vulnerable. But at the same time, you have good sailors round about you with Miranda and with Ari, who are close. Yeah, I'm, I'm close by Miranda, Clément, Ari, and uh, Seb and Kojiro are, are just behind. That's a really good fact when you are coming into the big south to have people around you. Uh, it gives me, uh, I can I say that, um, more confidence. And uh, I, I would not have liked to be on my own. So I'm really happy that Miranda and Clement are close by. I try to be fast, not to be first or in front of them. I try to be fast just to stay in touch, you know. And uh, after the big uh, south, uh, we're going to race again. But, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of a little bit scary. But I know that everything will, will be fine. We're going to be safe and uh, try to stay uh, together. You know that all the time we're all watching you every move. Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, it's not like if we were uh, not racing on our own, trying to do uh, around the world. I did that 10 years ago. I was on my own, uh, starting from Monaco. And when I did arrive to Cape Town, I decided to stop because I had no team, no money. Uh, if something happened to me at this time in the big south, uh, it was not a really good idea to do that. I'd rather be in the Vendée Globe in a race with good, really good, the best sailors of the world around me that on my own trying to do something silly. So that's Alexia Barrier uh, this morning. She's saying that uh, the story is the story of the Vendée Globe. It's about racing, but it's also about looking after each other. So that's it uh, for the day. We're looking forward to a quieter night, hopefully. In the meantime, uh, join us again tomorrow at the same time in the same place. Uh, and uh, always, uh, any questions, do post them on our social media sites, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook and on Twitter. Join me tomorrow.